Today I'm gonna be talking about feelings and emotions. So it's gonna be very serious. So I'm gonna be serious. Obviously, as you can tell by yeah. the title, today we're gonna be talking about depression and anxiety and mental health and basically how I got through it and how my relationship with God helped me get through it too because I ain't gonna sit here at like I did all this on my own. Like it was God. Like I couldn't do this by myself. It was a mess. If you're going through this situation too, just know it gets better. And I'm making this video to let you know it gets better because life ain't always going to be a mess. It's going to be some downs, but it's also going to be some ups. And it's going to be okay because Jesus loves you. That's why. Like Around this time a year ago, I was depressed. Man, like that shouldn't be so funny, but it was just like so out of the blue. <laughs> you got seasons with people. You got seasons with friends. And like over time, it's kind of just like, and like y'all fall off and it ain't nothing bad. It's not like the person did something to you. Y'all just fall off. So like that happened to like with me and a few people. So I wasn't like upset about that. Cause that's just life. Like sometimes you just fall off with people and it's just like, oh, okay. But on the other hand, I did have some people like who just did me wrong and it, for no reason and that like really hurt me at the time it would be one thing if it only happened once but it wasn't even just one time so like each time it happened like it just really affected me and i didn't realize like how much that affected me i just felt like well what i do to y'all like i'm over here chilling out of my business you just want to flip the switch god dang like for what if you want some foolishness i'm not finna cuss you out i'm not finna be, get all loud and make it a whole situation because that's just not me it just it ain't worth it i'll be so patient and like not jump up and start like automatically like going off and cussing them out and all that stuff and just trying to like calmly be like okay like, like you pissed me off this is why i'm finna go over here type of situation like even in the midst of that if you upsetting me i'm still being very calm like not getting nothing back in return not even getting like a really like genuine apology back in return and that really like irritated me it started getting really sad like i didn't even realize like how sad i was and just one day i'm just sitting there i'm just, just like you know i didn't been sad for a month now and i'm like girl that's depression i had to acknowledge the fact that i was depressed because like of course you don't want to be depressed like who wants to be depressed so after acknowledging the fact that i was it was just like dang that's crazy so i started trying to do things that i like to do i like to draw i like to paint i like skating i like writing like so i would go out and do those same things that were like my hobbies and what usually make me happy and as i was doing them like i was out there doing it but at the same time it didn't bring me the happiness that it usually would before that it was just really like draining and then i started getting really frustrated because it's like i'm out here doing what i can to help myself and i'm feeling like nothing's working it just got worse and then i started having insomnia because of it because for some reason it can lead to insomnia so I had trouble sleeping. If I did fall asleep, I would be asleep for no more than 10 minutes and wake right back up like, like I didn't just go to sleep. So one night I was just like really tired. Like I was just like emotionally tired and I was just sick of not being happy. So I was just sitting there crying and not even that low, low. <laughs> oh my gosh, like I'm so tired, I can't sleep. Like I was like, <laughs> I was ugly crying. Sitting there crying, I just started praying cause I'm just like, I was just like, God, like I'm tired. I don't even know what to do no more. Like I did all I could to be happy. Like, come help, please. <laughs> like help me. Like this is this is ghetto. I was just sitting there and afterwards I had saw this angel and it had came into my room. It was just like standing there and I'm like, <laughs> you don't just be walking around and just see no angel like just standing there like what's up? Like that's not <laughs> you, you don't see that. And that was just confirmation that he was listening to me. And after that, like I felt that peace because I'm like, okay, like you got me, like you sent old boy over here to come make sure I go, you know watch over me make sure I'm good so I went to sleep and I slept like a baby that night too like and I woke up and was like wow a decent night's sleep if you really like pray like pour your heart out onto God and just say like I'm really struggling with this like can you help me he will help you and sometimes he answers us in ways that we don't realize are him answering us so we all expect like this big voice to come and tell us like okay here's what you got to do this this and this and it doesn't always happen like that and over time i started to realize that just because he's not speaking to me like in a big voice doesn't mean he's not speaking to me using people around me using the things happening around me so 
I had to start paying attention to that too. And I started writing more. I started a journal because I didn't know what to do with my emotions. And it was kind of just like bubbling up and I needed a way to like get it out. And I just felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to. Like, of course I had my parents to talk to, but I wanted somebody my age to like share this stuff with. And I just felt like I, I didn't have anybody to share it with because where they at? You want to like speak to somebody, but every sometimes people around you, you're not comfortable with talking to those people. So it can be like, I understand like how you want to talk to somebody about something, but you're not comfortable with talking to that person about what you got going on. I started in June last year. And from that first journal entry to the last one that I did, um, which was March this year. So like, I would just write every day, like write my feelings. Like I feel like this, or this happened today, or this is ghetto because I did. I just continuously just kept on journaling and writing about how I was feeling. And as time went on, like that really, that really helped me. And in the midst of it, it was kind of just like, oh, this is pointless. I'm sitting here just writing in my journal. But like after that, it was a way for me to release my stress, release my anger, or whatever I had going on in my thoughts. So that also helped me like get through the situation because it's just like, okay, I need to release what's happening like inside of me. Because if you keep that bubbled up, it's just going to get worse and it's going to pop and it's going to be ghetto. Start praying more, which is talking to God. So basically I started talking to God more. And he also like showed me that I'm still like holding on to some stuff that wasn't helping me, that was actually hurting me more. And it was really uncomfortable for me, like changing like the things that I did, even though I didn't want to and that it was uncomfortable for me, I still did it because I'm like, okay, you said this is gonna help me. Obviously you're not gonna steer me wrong. He's not gonna tell you to do something if it's gonna hurt you. Anything he tells you is for your good. So you should listen, even if you don't wanna do it, even if it's gonna hurt you in the midst of it, like you will be better off doing what he tells you to do. I'm telling y'all, cause it was, Oh, y'all, like, I did not want to. I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go over here. I don't want to spend so much time off of social media. I like my memes. All that time that I spent pouring into all those things he was telling me to stop pouring my time into, I gave it back to myself. And when I did that, like, it really helped me. It, like, grow as a person. It helped me with my mental health. Sometimes you need to be selfish in a way, not of um, not caring about everybody else around you. But putting yourself first and really paying attention to your needs. I had no choice but to paint like this whole entire school year because of my APR classes and them deadlines were ridiculous. Because I had to paint so much, it was also very therapeutic for me too because it's like, okay, this is what I like to do. Even though like the deadline was stupid, I kind of just was like, whatever. I would use my lunch time and go paint. I would use my free period and go paint. I would use like my free time in classes. Like if I finish my work, I'd be like, okay, can I go down to the art room and like paint? Cause I had paintings to finish and I was gonna fail if I didn't. But still, y'all understand what I'm saying? Take the time that you have free and just pour it into things that are gonna be good for you. Because I would get so much anxiety, it was just like very nerve wracking. And I didn't realize like how bad it was too at the at that time, like throughout the school year. So on the outside to everybody, I would seem like I'm all like, woo woo, cheery, bubbly, regular Trinity. On the inside, I was probably panicking. Just because somebody looks happy and like they're doing good on the outside does not mean they doing good on the inside. And I can tell y'all this some experience because like people around me didn't even know like I was struggling. <laughs> what was happening in my head, was a totally different thing from what y'all was saying. Check on your goofy friends. Just cause just cause they laughing and cracking jokes don't mean they okay. Cause I'ma tell y'all one thing about goofy people. It don't matter what we going through. We gonna crack some jokes. But look, that don't mean we okay. Check on your goofy friends. And just check on your friends in general. Cause you never know what anybody got going on. As the school year went on, like, of course there was like foolishness happening around me too. It just got to the point where I'm like, okay, is this situation dumb? Yes, I'm not finna put no energy into it because it's stupid. What's the point of pouring out all your emotions or giving reactions to all these little different petty things happening around you if it's stupid? It's not worth it. I'm telling y'all, it is not worth it. Like, not everything deserves a reaction, so... That also helped me with my anxiety too, cause I just didn't feel the need to react to everything that was happening around me. Cause it's just like, stuff is temporary, it is. After I stopped caring about stuff that wasn't important, I was just like, it's another day, whatever. Like y'all can do whatever. If y'all ever find yourself like in a lot of drama or situation, I'm telling y'all, it ain't even all that. Like it might feel like it in the moment, but as you 
as it passes on, you gonna look back on it and be like, what the heck was that? If you are holding a grudge against somebody, that's, or like choosing not to forgive somebody, that's not gonna hurt that person. It's only hurting you. So you sitting here holding on to that anger, to that grudge against that person that did you wrong or you felt like Shanae did you like that. It's not hurting that person, it's hurting you. And you're only gonna be holding yourself back by holding on to those feelings, holding on to that anger. Let it go, forgive that person. You go, okay, like, who cares? At the end of the day, you feel so much freer. And like afterwards, like, even like in the midst of that situation during that summer, it's like these people like really hurt my feelings. And they, like, I'm feeling some type of way. And I'm still trying to like move on from it. Like after I just like let it go, it's just like, okay, like I'm just gonna forgive these people. I'm just gonna let it go and keep moving forward i felt so much better because it was just like a burden just like lifted off of my shoulders fixing your mental health internally you want to do things for yourself externally too so i went shopping like a lot and i like going thrifting so i went thrifting i brought myself a whole bunch of clothes like i just went thrifting like every two weeks and getting myself new clothes to wear and like making outfits and making sure I look good. I came with the fits, y'all. I was not playing no games. Because we all have our days where we're just like bummy, bummy, bummy. And it'd be like, okay, I'm gonna get cute this day. Like, I'm coming cute every day. Like, I don't care. And after doing that, like, it just gave me so much more confidence. And I felt better about myself. Because, like, I will be like, dang, girl, you looking good. And the next day, like, dang, girl, you looking good again. Started doing my hair more and, like, changing my styles up some more, too. Just to feel good. Just to look presentable on the outside. So, you will feel better dress just by simply dressing nice like consistently so i just consistently dress nice too and put on things that you like to wear clothes can be expensive so go to a cheap clothing store like goodwill and pick out some things and make it work and wear it rock it you do it and be confident about it too i would even feel uncomfortable sometimes too like at first because it's like isn't this too dressy for school like and then I had to realize, like, girl, you finna kill it. Like, where the Miha boots to school? And what about it? Who gonna say something? Who gonna say something to you about your boots? Nobody. Okay. And I wore it. And guess what? I felt so much better about myself. Yeah, just because you don't see everybody doing that thing doesn't mean that you should stop yourself from doing it because you like, oh, everybody's not doing this. Or, oh, this is too different. I'm gonna stand out. And it's like, who cares? Stand out, girl. Wear them draft zebra print leggings. Like, whatever. Do you. If it makes you happy, do it. Take risks. Like, if you feel like you at a place where you need new friends, like, just go out there and just socialize. And you will find new people to hang around. You will find people with similar interests to you. Like, like the friends I have now, they cool. Like, I love them. Like, they dope. Oh, my gosh. I cannot stress this enough. When you just start doing things that you like, regardless of what everybody else around you is saying about that thing, you will feel so much better. I'm telling y'all, like, I just let all of that go and start doing the things that I like. Start wearing the things that I like. Start saying the things that I like to say, like, such as me being on here talking about God and reposting videos about God. Like, I don't see people doing that, like, well, people that I know, like, on my timeline and stuff. So, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes, yeah, it's different. But at the end of the day, this is what I like to do. This is what I'm passionate about. And I feel so much better just, like, doing things that I like to do and not caring about what nobody has to say about it. So, in conclusion, do not care about what anybody has to say about you, what you got going on, the things that you like. Because I'm telling y'all, like, if you stop letting people's opinions and what you see everybody else doing affect you, you feel so much better because you're not even going to care about it. It's just going to be like, and what about it? This is what I like. Like, who cares? I used to be depressed. Now look at me. <laughs> Flourishing. Just really coming to God and giving him your troubles because he will answer your prayers even in the small things. I'm telling y'all, like, and going through a change. Sometimes you're going to have to change some things about yourself and your surroundings, the people you're around, the stuff that you're doing. And it will be uncomfortable. I'm telling y'all, like, because I've been there. I was uncomfortable in the midst of it. But the end result is so good. Like, I never felt this good in my life. And it's kind of just like, no worries. Just chilling. Like, I'm over here straight chilling, y'all. Like, and before I would just be so worth it about all the stuff happening around me. And now I'm just like, whatever. So I'm telling y'all, like, just let it go give your worries to god and don't be afraid to be uncomfortable and go through a change because it's a process to get to get to a better part of your life to get to a better point of your life and higher way of thinking because it's, it's just a process you're gonna have to be ready to just 
really surrender, really let go of some things and just really give God control too. Because God's going to tell you to do some things. Like if you pray to him and ask him about some stuff, he's going to tell you to do some, some things. And he's not only going to answer your prayers, he's going to tell you like, what to do he's going to show you what to give up what to stop doing what to start doing and who to hang around stuff like that you have to be willing to listen because if you're not willing to listen and you like no i want to hold on to this i want to keep doing it your situation isn't going to change because you're not doing anything to change it because the things that you need to do to change it you're not doing so until you're willing to let go of that stuff and really go out there and like listen to what he's telling you to do listen to the things that are good for you because he knows what's best he knows what's good for you if you just let go and listen i'm telling y'all like it's gonna it's gonna be good because i've been there in the midst of it i was like oh my gosh this is terrible but at the end of it i'm like oh like this is dope like this is so good like i don't care about nothing if your troubles want you go cool.